Shalom. I want to give a praise and a glory to Yahweh by Shem HaShah, by Shem and double honor to the elders and apostles of great most honor to this truth, and peace, blessing, and salutation to the hope for elect. <laughs> okay. I'm not long woke up, <laughs> and I wanted to do a lesson, and I came across this one, so I'm going to let it play. It is crude. <laughs> you see that they have no problem calling us niggas. And it's ugly. In the Arab world, racist depictions of black people are rampant. <laughs> and the use of blackface is rife. Black people are routinely cast into subservience, playing servants, prostitutes, or they're shown as straight up objects of ridicule. When we watch TV shows or movies, black people are always inferior. And blackface is an inferior, negative, and racist concept, which should not belong in the Arab world. We almost never speak about this segment of Arab society black people. Firstly, because they never get to speak in public spaces. The black person is a citizen in the Arab world, but an invisible citizen. Why? Because power made him invisible. Invisibilize. To school, they are being discriminated against. They are seen less than because of the color of their skin, because they're not Arabs, because they are not white. Just because of that reason, they are not seen as fit for the Arab world. So the Yemen people discriminate against them. In Sana, members of the minority group known as Muhamshen, literally means the marginalized, live in dismal conditions in densely populated slums. They count among the poorest of the poor in the Arab world's most impoverished country by more than five years of conflict. In the narrow streets of a shanty town in southern Sana, lined with makeshift tents and cardboard homes, along with a few simple brick structures, women cook outside on stoves fueled with scraps of rubbish. Hassan told AFP, quote, it's as if we are not part of Yemeni society, even though we hold Yemeni identification papers. Our children in school are treated differently, and we are looked at sideways on the streets and in markets. Huh. Crazy, crazy. And literally, I have a cousin, man, who's in today's world, or by the world standards, let's call it mixed. And basically, um, yeah, it's mixed with Ishmael and um, Benjamin, man. And, um, yeah, man. <laughs> so some of these people in here it kind of reminded me of, um, of him, man. <clears throat> Especially with, um, the, the slightly dark skin and the, uh, the, the curly hair. <laughs> but, um, yeah, man, let's get into the scriptures. Let's get right into the scriptures. Psalms 83. And one it says a psalm it says a single psalm of Asapa Keep not thy silence, O power, hold not thy peace, and be not still of power. And we know who wrote the Psalms, King David. And I love to make mention of King David, did these um Ishmaelites. They love to make mention of King David. Let's see what King David said about them. For lo thine enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. The Tamanakas of Edom and the Ishmaelites. And yeah, we know who the Ishmaelites are. An, Ish an Ishmaelite is basically um, a descendant of Ishmael, or the so-called... Um, Arabs in, ter in today's world and it says um, of Moab and the Hagarines, Gabal and Ammon and Amalek, the Philistines with the inhabitants of Tyre, a sir also is joined with them, they have hope in the children of Lat Salah and it says do unto them as unto the Midianites as to Circea 
And it says, as to Jabin and the brook of Kijan, which perished at Endor, they became as dung for the earth, make their nobles like Oreb and like Zeb, ye all their princes of Zeba, and as Zalamuna, if I'm saying it right, who said, let us take to ourselves the house of God in possession. And, um, yeah, if you didn't know, um, the nobles of Reb and Zeb are basically, um, Midianites. And they were basically like, like princes, man. <clears throat> and they were basically slain by Gideon and also, let's say, the Northern Kingdom. <laughs> <clears throat> and I'll get into that after I finish reading this. And it says, Oh my God, make them like a wheel, as a stubble before the wind, as the fire burneth a wood, and as the flame setteth the mountains on fire. So persecute them with thy tempest, and make them afraid with thy storm. Fill their faces with shame, that they may seek thy name, O Yahweh. And it says, Let them be confounded and troubled forever. Yea, let them be put to shame and perish, that men may know that thou, whose name alone is Yahweh, art thou most higher over all the earth. And yeah, let me go to Judges. Judges 6 and 1. And it says, um, and children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord Yahweh, and the, and the Lord Yahweh delivered them into the hand of the of of Midian seven years. And the hand of Midian prevailed against Israel, and because of the Midianites, the children of Israel made them the dens which are in the mountains and caves and strongholds. And so it was when Israel had sown that the Midianites came up with the Amalekites. <laughs> and you know what? <laughs> And that just reminds me of today, man. In today's day and age, um, the so-called Arabs with um, with with Amalek over there in the, in the land of Israel, man. Both of them together, they were working together, man. <clears throat> and even to take us into captivity, the Atlantic slave trade, man, they were working together. And it says, um. Yeah, and it says, and the children of the east, even they came up against them, and they had camped against them, and destroyed the increase of the earth till thou come unto Gaza, and left no sustenance for Israel, neither sheep, nor ox, nor ass. For they came up with their cattle and their tents, and they came as a grasshopper for multitude, for both they and their camels were without number, and they entered into the land to destroy it. <laughs> and, you see, and we know this is talking about Ishmael, man. Or those Arabs, <laughs> just like just like today. What do you see the Arabs riding on over there in the east? The camels, they, they love their camels. <laughs> and it says, and Israel was greatly impoverished because of the Midianites, and the children of Israel cried unto the, the Lord Yahweh. And yeah, man, that's something we have to do today. In the land of our captivities, remember the name of the Lord and all that he did for our forefathers. Because the heathen have come past us, man. They're over us right now. And that means we have to trust in the Lord even more. And when I say the Lord right now, I mean Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. Because without Yahweh Shai, there is no deliverance. And carrying on, and it says, um, and it came to pass when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord because of the Midianites that the Lord sent a prophet unto the children of Israel which said unto them, Thus saith the Lord, Yahweh, thy power of Israel, I brought you up from Egypt and brought you forth out of the house of bondage and I delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians and out of the hand of all that oppressed you and drove them out from before you and gave you... <sighs> <sighs> And gave you their land. And I said unto you, I am the Lord, Yahweh, your power. Fear not the gods of the, the Amorites in whose land ye dwell, but ye have not obeyed my voice. And there came an angel of the Lord and sat on an oak, which was in 
um Afra, if I'm saying it right, that pretend unto Joash the um Abiza right, if I'm saying it right. And his son Gideon threshed wheat by the wine press to hide it from the Midianites, and the angel of the Lord appeared unto him, and said unto him, The Lord Yahweh is with thee, thou mighty man of valour. And Gideon said unto him, O oh my Lord, if the Lord Yahweh be with us, why then is <clears throat> all this befallen us? And where be all his miracles which our fathers told us of? Saying, Did not the Lord Yahweh bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord Yahweh have forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. And you see, the reason why <laughs> the children of Israel were delivered into the hand of these Arabs was because, as it makes mention in the first verse, <laughs> And it says, And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Midian seven years. And literally, <clears throat> let me go to Judith. Because the Lord hates iniquity, man. He hates it. Judith 5 and 17. And it says, And whilst they sinned not before their power, they prospered because... The power that hateth iniquity was with them. But when they departed from the way which he appointed them, they were destroyed in many battles very sore and were led captives into a land that was not theirs. And the temple of their power was cast to the ground and the cities were taken by the enemies. So you see, when the Israelites didn't do as the Lord said, then he will allow our enemies to, to overtake us man, and destroy us. <clears throat> And it says, but now they return to their power and are come up from the places where they were scattered and have possessed Jerusalem where their sanctuary is and are seated in the hill country for it was desolate. Now therefore, my Lord and governor, if there be any error against this people and they sin against their power, let us consider that this shall be their ruin and let us go up and we shall overcome them. But if there be no iniquity in their nation, let my Lord now pass by, at least their Lord defend them. Yeah, <laughs> being Yahweh Shai. <clears throat> and their God be for them, being how, and we become a reproach before all the world. So you see, that's what happens when the children of Israel turn back to Yahweh by Shem Haushai. The Lord gonna fight for us, man. Here it is, it looks like we ain't got no power. <clears throat> I wanna say no power, I mean no God or, or any sort of defense, but we do. It's the name of the Lord, man. Yahweh is our power. And Yahweh Shai is our deliverer. <clears throat> and you need to trust in them, man. On both of them. Let me go back to Judges 6. Uh, and where was I? <clears throat> hmm. Yeah, verse 13 it says, And Gideon said unto him, O my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befallen us? And where be all his miracles which our fathers told us of, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord hath forsaken us and delivered us into the hand of the Midianites. And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hands of the Midianites. Have, have not I sent thee? And he said unto him, O oh my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh. And I am the least in my father's house. And you see, that's what I've noticed about the Lord, man. He's always choosing the ones who are weak and who have no might in their hand <clears throat> and who aren't great. And that's literally the prophets, man. The prophets is chosen. They're, 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 they're literally nothing in this world. They're less than nothing. Like I can mention here, man. First Christians 1 and 27 says, But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. So you see, <clears throat> so I'm glad he made mention of Gideon being, the, 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 he's saying that he was the least, because they were just like King David, man. He was just a shepherd. Yeah. And you have the ears to hear and the eyes to see. King David is Moses, man. <laughs> 
<clears throat> that good old shepherd. And um, yeah, and even <clears throat> David's father, man, said, oh, look at these other sons, they're warriors, they're strong. And then that's when Samuel was like, yo, look, look not on appearance, but I've refused them. Because it, it, it was about what was inside them. <clears throat> and these men that the Lord chose, they were chosen before the foundation of the earth, man. <clears throat> and yeah, let me carry And yeah. Verse 16, it says... And the Lord said unto him, Surely I will be with thee, and thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. And he said unto him, If now I have found grace in, the, in thy sight, then show me a sign that thou talkest with me. Depart not hence, I pray thee, until I come unto thee, and bring forth my present, and set it before thee. And he said, I will tarry until thou come again. Oh, it's lucky, yeah. <laughs> And it says, And Gideon went in and made ready a kid and unleavened cakes of an um is it ephah for flour? The flesh he put in a basket and he put the broth in a pot and brought it out unto him under the oak and presented it. And the angel of God said unto him, Take the flesh and the unleavened cakes and lay them upon this rock and pour out the broth and he said and he did so so like you then the angel of the lord put forth the end of the staff that was in his hand and touched the flesh and the unleavened cakes and there rose up a fire out of the rock and consumed the flesh and unleavened cakes then the angel of the lord departed out of his sight and when gideon perceived that he was an angel of the lord gideon was alas O lord god for because I have seen an angel of the Lord face to face, and the Lord said unto him, Peace be unto thee, fear not, thou shalt not die. And then Gideon and built an altar there unto the Lord Yahweh, and called it, I know it says, Jehovah Shal Shalom, <laughs> but gone by the ancient period of Hebrew, it's the name of the Lord, which is Yahweh, and Shalom or Shalom, being peace. And it says, unto this day, unto this day, it is yet in um, Ahara of, of the Abizarites. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but <clears throat> carrying on. And it came to pass the same night that the Lord said unto him, Take thy father's young bullock, even the second bullock of seven years old, and throw down the altar of Baal, that thy father have and cut down... <clears throat> The grove that is by it, I built an altar unto the Lord, thy God, upon the top of this rock, in the in the ordered place, and take the second bullock and offer a burnt sacrifice with the wood of the grove, which thou shalt cut down. Then Gideon took ten men of his servants, and did as the Lord had said unto him, and so it was because he feared his father's um household, and the men of the city. That he could not do it by day, that he did it by night. And when the men of the city arose early in the morning, behold, the altar of all was cast down, and the grove was cut down that was by it, and the second bullock was offered up on the altar that was built. And they said one to another, Who have done this thing? <clears throat> and when they inquired and asked, they asked Gideon, the son of Joash, have done this thing. <laughs> then the men of the city said unto Joash, Bring out thy son, that he may die. Damn. And you see, that just shows you the, the mindset of the two thirds. They'll happily kill you over the false gods. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, where was I? Yeah, and it says, Then the men of the city said unto Joash, Bring out thy son, that he may die. Because he have cast down the altar of Baal, and because he have cut down the grove that was by it. And Joash said unto all that stood against him, Will ye plead for Baal? Will ye save him? He that will plead for him, let, let him be put to death whilst it is yet morning. If he <clears throat> be a god, let him plead for himself, because one have cast down his altar. <laughs> oh, man. It says, therefore, on that day, he called him Jerubbabel, 
saying, let Baal plead against him because he have thrown down his altar. Then all the Midianites and the Amalekites and the children of the east were gathered together and went over and pitched in the valley of um, Jezreel. And it says, but the spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon and he blew a trumpet and Abizur was gathered after him. And he sent messengers throughout all Manasseh, who also was gathered after him. And he sent messengers unto Asher and unto Zebulun and unto Nephetali. And they came up to meet, meet them. <clears throat> so he had a northern kingdom. <clears throat> and it says, And Gideon said unto God, O Yahweh, if thou wilt save Israel by my hand, as thou hast said, behold, I will put a fleece of wool in the floor. And if the <clears throat> if the dew be on the fleece only, and it be dry upon all the earth beside, then shall I know that thou wilt save Israel by mine hand, and thou hast said, and it was so, <clears throat> for he rose up earlier on the morrow and thrust the fleece together, and wring the dew of so he wring the dew out of the fleece, a bowl full of water. Damn. Wow. And Gideon said unto the, unto God, let not, let not thine anger be hot against me, and I will speak but this once. Let me prove, I pray thee, but this once with the fleece. Let it now be dry only upon the fleece, and upon all the ground let there be dew. And God did so that night, for it was dry upon the fleece only, and there was dew on all the ground. <clears throat> And yeah, man, this is this is the, the important part here, man. The taking down of these disgusting Ishmaelites. <clears throat> Judges 7 and 1, it says, Then Jerubal, who is Gideon, and all the people that were with him, rose up early and pitched beside the well of Herod, so that the host of the Midianites were on the north side of them by the hill of Moreh in the valley. And yeah, the host being in their armies. So they were coming to fight. <clears throat> and this is when the Lord said unto Gideon, The people that are with thee are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hands. These Israel vaunt themselves against me, saying, My own hand have saved me. And we know we know how Jake is, man. We know how these two fair Jakes are and these wicked Jakes are. They don't want to give glory unto you, how much and how share. <clears throat> And it says, Now therefore go to proclaim in the ears of the people, saying, Whosoever is fearful and afraid, let him return and depart early from Mount Gilead. And there return of the people twenty and two thousand, and there remain ten thousand. And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people are yet too many. Bring them down unto the water, and I will try them for there. I will try them for thee there. And it shall be that of whom I say unto thee, this shall go with thee, the same shall go with thee. And of whomsoever I say unto thee, this shall not go with thee, the same shall not go. And it says, so he brought down the people unto the water. And the Lord said unto Gideon, everyone that lappeth of the water with his tongue, as a dog lappeth, him shall thou set by himself. Likewise, everyone that boweth down upon his knees to drink. And the number of them that lapped, putting their hand to their mouth, were three hundred men. But all the rest of the people bowed down upon their knees to drink water. And the Lord said unto Gideon, By the three hundred men that lapped, will I save you, and deliver the Midianites into thine hand, and let all the other people go, every man unto his place. So you see that the Lord does not care about numbers, man. The Lord doesn't need some huge, large army. <laughs> like, just like he makes mention here, man. <clears throat> yeah, and literally, Leviticus 26 and 8 says, And five of you shall chase a hundred, and an hundred of you shall put ten thousand to flight, and your enemy shall fall before you by the sword. So you see, the Lord can use a small amount of numbers or people to deliver a whole bunch of people. <clears throat> and carrying on, it's, this is almost finished. Um, where was I? 
Yeah. Verse 8, and it says, So the people took victuals into their hands and their trumpets, and he sent all the rest of Israel, every man unto his tent, and retained those 300 men. And the, and the host of Midian was beneath him in the valley. And it came to pass that same night that the Lord Yahweh said unto him, Arise, get thee down unto the host, for I have delivered into for sluckier, for I have delivered it into thine hand. But if thou fear to go down, go thou with um Fura, thy servant, down to the host, and thou shalt hear what they say, and afterward shall thine hands be strengthened to go down unto the host. Then went he down to Fura, his servant, unto the outside of the armed men that were in the host. And the Midianites and the Amalekites and all the children of the east lay along in the, in the valley like grasshoppers for the multitude. And their camels were without number as the sands by the seaside for multitude. So there was a whole load of them, man. <laughs> there was a whole load. Of, it was an entire army. And when Gideon was come, behold, there was a man that told a dream unto his fellow and said, Behold, I dreamed a dream, and lo, a cake of barley bread tumbled into the host of Midian, and came unto a tent, and smote it, that it fell, and overturned it, that the tent lay long, the slokia lay along. And his fellow answered and said, This is nothing else save the sword of Gideon, the son of Joash, a man of Israel. For into his hand have God delivered Midian, and all the host. <coughs> And it was so when Gideon heard the telling of the dream and the interpretation thereof that he worshipped and returned into the host of Israel and said, Arise, for the Lord Yahweh have delivered into your hand the host of Midian. And he delivered the three hundred men into three companies. <clears throat> and he put a trumpet in every man's hand with empty pitchers and lamps within the pitchers. And he said unto them, Look on me, and do likewise. And behold, when I come to the outside of the camp, it shall be that as I do, shall, so shall ye do. When I blow, when I blow with a trumpet, and so like, yeah, I and all that are with me, then blow ye the trumpets also on every side of all the camp, and say, The sword of the Lord and of Gideon. <laughs> Beautiful man. So Gideon and the hundred men, that were with him came unto the outside of the camp in the beginning of the middle watch and they had put newly set the watch and they blew the trumpets and break the pitchers that they that were in their hands and he says um and the three companies blew the trumpets and break the pitchers and held the lamps in their in their left hands and the trumpets in their right hands to blow with all and they cried the sword of the lord and of Gideon, and they stood every man in his place round about the camp, and all the host ran and cried and fled. <laughs> <clears throat> Where was that? And and the three hundred blew the trumpets, and the Lord set every man's sword against his fellow, even throughout all the host, and the host fled um to Beth what well, Beth Shifa or Shita. I don't really know how to pronounce these <laughs> these words, but um, it says in Zarath and to the border of um, Abel, Abel me, I don't know how to pronounce it. And it says unto Tabath, and the men of Israel gathered themselves together out of Nephabatali and out of Asher and out of all Manasseh and pursued after the Midianites. So. So that 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 massive host that that was like the sand of the sea were put to flight or basically ran from three hundred men, <laughs> and that's just the power of our that's that's literally the power of our power. Like literally, we serve the true living God, man. The twelve tribes of Israel do the sons of God do, and the same way. These Midianites or these Ishmaelites were put to flight. With those Amalekites, the Lord gonna do it again. With the house of David, man. <clears throat> the mighty men of valor. And where was I? It says, and Gideon sent messengers throughout all Mount Ephraim, saying, Come down against the Midianites and take before them the waters unto Bethrabah and Jordan. 
Then all the men of Ephraim gathered themselves together and took the waters unto Bethrabah and Jordan. And they took two princes of the Midianites, Oreb and Zeb. And they slew Oreb upon the rock of Oreb. And Zeb they slew at the winepress of Zeb. And pursued Midian and brought the heads of Oreb and Zeb to Gideon on the other side, on the other side Jordan. So you see, <laughs> like I made mention in um, Psalms 83, man. What did David say? Do, on, do unto them as what you did unto the Midianites, man. Just to slay them, man. And the Lord will slay them. Isaiah 34 and 1. It says, Come near ye nations to hear, and hearken ye people at the earth here, and all that is there in the world, and all things that come forth of it. For the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations, and his fury upon all the armies. He have utterly destroyed them. He have delivered them to the slaughter. <clears throat> so you see, the Lord gonna recompense these nations, man. He, he gonna fight for his people and destroy them, man. So let these other nations show their hatred because our deliverer, Yahweh Shai, is gonna repay them, man. He's gonna visit all of them. <clears throat> let me and let me close out on this, man. Actually, you know what? Let me get two more. This one and another one. Second Andrews 13 and 49. And it says, Now when he destroyeth the multitude of the nations that are gathered together, he shall defend his people that remain. And yeah, man, the Lord gonna destroy those nations that were gathered together, man. To subdue him. He's gonna destroy them, man. He's gonna destroy all their armies. And then now I'm gonna close out on this. On that save if first Maccabees four and Yeah, first Maccabees four and nine it says Remember how our fathers were delivered into the Red Sea when Pharaoh pursued them with an army? Now therefore let us cry unto heaven, if peradventure the Lord will have mercy upon us, and remember the covenant of our fathers, and destroy this host before our face this day, that so all the heathen may know that there is one who delivers and saveth Israel. And yeah, man, the heathen will find that out. They're going to find out all these Negroes, Latinos, Hispanics, and Native Americans and similar Indians that their God is, is living and their God is for them. <clears throat> and you know what? I said I was going to close out on that, but I got one more. I got one more. Ah, right, here we go. Joel 2 and 27, and it says, And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, being the twelve tribes, or the, the sons of, of Jacob, and that I am the Lord your God, and none else, and my people shall never be ashamed. So there you go, man. The Lord, Yahweh, is the power of the twelve tribes of Israel, being the sons of God, <clears throat> and none else, man. We serve the living power. These other nations don't, don't, their, their gods are, are idols, man. They have no breath in them. But yeah, man, I hope this was edifying. I want to give a praise on them. Glory to you, Halba, Shem, Hal Shai, and Shalom.